Hi, Dr. Kyle Kiesel here with the Functional Movement Systems, and I'm excited to take a few minutes and share a little insight about the SFMA with you. Of course, we've got multiple tools of screening, testing, and assessing movement, and our clinical model for movement assessment is, is the SFMA, the Selective Functional Movement Assessment. Now, it's made up of seven different top-tier patterns, what we call our top-tier patterns. So we're gonna clear movement throughout the body. So we look at cervical spine. We look, look at upper extremity patterns behind your back and over your head. We look at composite flexion, touching your toes, extension backwards, bending, rotation as you can imagine, single leg stance and squat. So we've got almost everything covered in the movements in terms of what you need for, for daily life. And what I want to give you a little insight in today is the rotation pattern. Now rotation is, and they're all important, right? But rotation is extremely important in everyday life, functional activities from backing up out of the driveway, getting in and out of the car. It's, you can imagine just so many things. And think about it when you get up to higher level skills, running, throwing, hitting, almost any kind of sporting movement, as you can imagine, rotation is, is incredibly important. So at SFMA, what we do when we're worried about one pattern that maybe isn't perfect is we break it down into its parts, right? So when we think about rotation, it's pretty obvious. You're gonna say, how are you gonna look at rotation? Well, you're gonna say spine. That spine's really important, right? And I agree, spine, crucial, okay? And we're gonna look at the spine a couple different ways. We're gonna look at it actively and passively if, if, if active is a problem. We're gonna look at the upper part of the spine and the lower part separately because they actually move differently, okay? The next thing is gonna be what? The, the hips, right? So obvious, you're gonna twist through your hips and the pelvis, right? So hips, and same idea here. We've gotta look at both hip internal rotation ability and hip external rotation ability. We need to obviously look at both of those. Same thing, we'll teach you how to do that actively and passively if needed. You've gotta clear the hips and spine. That looks great, okay? But we're not done yet, right? Don't forget about, maybe the one people do forget about is the tibia, okay? Tibial rotation is a big part of this pattern. And not only is it part of the pattern, but it's extremely important for that normal function at the ankle and at the knee. We teach an entry level education in, in physical therapy. And of course, classic kinesiology is a big part of, of what they learn. And you know, at the end of the day, it, classic kinesiology is what it is. Um, it doesn't necessarily represent how people move functionally. And all the books talk about the screw home mechanism and the tibial rotation at the knee. And they'll even talk about it in maybe closed chain. But then we get into clinical practice and no one's even looking at it because they don't even really think about how would they or why would they? Would you only look at it in a knee pain patient? Well, we look at that in everybody that can't do the rotation perfectly because if tibial rotation is the problem, every time I need to go left, I'm cheating farther up the chain. Could cause neck pain, could cause facet overuse in my left C5-6 facet, who knows, right? Everything is connected. So don't forget about the tibia, extremely important. And if you've never heard of the SFMA, and this is all new, of course, we encourage you to go learn more about it. But just a little tip, chronic knee pain patients, chronic knee pain patients, check tibial rotation. Guarantee you're gonna find tibial rotation is problematic, okay? Really easy to do, lie them on their side, put their knee at 90, put their ankle in neutral, and see if they can lift their heel. Okay? And you can picture that being tibial medial rotation. Popliteus is the primary muscle there. You gotta know how to treat it. You gotta know how to, how to mobilize it. We use a lot of taping techniques and motor control exercises when the tibia is a problem, but it fixes quickly. That's the cool thing. Identify it a couple days really, and it gets better very quickly. So don't forget about tibial rotation. And I know many of you may be thinking, well, what about foot and ankle? There's supination and pronation going on as well. And there is, and we catch that in our single leg stance and our squat pattern. So even though supination pronation is part of it, we're gonna catch it in dysfunction in a couple other patterns what we, in, in what we call our breakouts. So selective functional movement assessment, seven top tier patterns, they're all related. We're gonna break out rotations. Spine and hips are obvious. 
Don't forget about the tibia. Hey guys, if you like the video, definitely hit the thumbs up. And if you want to stay informed, hit the bell so we can notify you anytime we put up new videos. And of course, any questions or comments, put those at the end. We'll certainly be checking them out and trying to respond. Thanks so much. And remember, always move well and then move often.